Hi, today I'm going to do a look inspired by Tippi Hedren's makeup in The Birds. And Hitchcock's heroines weren't always blonde. I mean, there was Ingrid Bergman, but he definitely did have a penchant for the icy blondes. And his female characters were never blousy or overtly sexual. They were complex, fiercely intelligent women who were also elegant and graceful, real class acts. Tippi starred in two of Hitchcock's films, The Birds and then Marnie, and he had spotted her in a drinks commercial. He'd His previous leading lady was Grace Kelly and she'd got married and gone off to Monaco and he was looking for his new Grace Kelly and um, he saw her in a commercial and became obsessed with, with her and called her in for a screen test. And really, he dictated everything about how she looked, you know, in the birds, her makeup, her hair, her costume, her clothes, everything. You know, he loved those really chic, elegant women. And she plays a rich socialite, so it sort of fits in with the character. But he also controlled all of that off screen as well. And um, they had a pretty um, dysfunctional relationship, which led to, at the end of Marnie, she stopped working with him and it completely stalled her career and... Um, Funnily enough, it was the end of his sort of run of successful movies as well. So it's quite an interesting time. And um, I just absolutely love the way she looks in The Birds. I think, you know, it's incredibly chic. My model today is Svetlana Pavlova. What a fantastic name that is. And yes, she is Russian. So here we go. It's a really iconic look. Great for a party. And I hope you enjoy it. So I'm going to start by using Too Chiclat Foundation um, by YSL, and this is in B40. So I'm going to apply this onto the back of my hand. So I'm applying foundation all over Svetlana's skin. For Tippi Hedren, her skin in both of the Hitchcock movies she did looked absolutely flawless and was obviously quite well made up. Okay, next I'm going to use some highlighter, sort of concealer highlighter. This is the Clinique one. And I'm going to use this around a few different areas of the face. So obviously under the eyes, onto the cheekbone area as well. It's because she always had that real luminous look, despite the torture that she was <laughs> going through with Hitchcock. So next I'm going to use Cream Blusher, and this is by Revlon. I think it's called Pinched. But it's a really pretty, quite 60s um, pale peach. So next I'm going to use powder. I'm going to set this makeup. This is just a translucent loose powder. To start by going all over because Tippy's look was very kind of velvety, her skin. She didn't have shiny skin. It was a, a sort of very chic, sophisticated look. And to give an extra sort of perfected look, I'm gonna use some of the MAC Mineralize powder. This is light medium. Put a light dusting again over here, mainly around the center of the face. A really perfect look. Okay, so on to eyes, and I'm going to start by using some Pro Prime by NARS. Use this all over the lids. What does it do, Lisa? This is to stop your eyeshadow from creasing. Mm. Because I'm going to use eyeshadow and um, eyeliner and, and different things mm -hmm. and lashes. You want everything to stay mm -hmm. in place. So if you just put a really thin layer of this over, it kind of sets and Mm -hmm. Stops it from moving around. Next on the eyes, I'm going to use the um, this is a Burberry eyeshadow, just a quite neutral, pale brown color. And this is more just to create a little bit of a socket line. It's got a bit of shimmer, so it's not going to look heavy at all. I'm just going to blend that in. I don't really see this in the film, but there is a, a kind of shape there, definitely. So you apply a little bit and then smudge it with different brush? Yeah, you, you could use this big brush, I guess, but I like to keep mm -hmm. one one of my bigger brushes clean, mm -hmm. cleanish, and then, you know, you've always got that one to go in and a nice big, soft brush to go in and blend everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use this very, very bright blue. This is Anya by Ilamasqua, and it's quite a very 50s blue, actually. You can see how great it is. And this was worn a lot, this sort of colour, not only at the end of the 50s and throughout the 50s, but um, it was very fashionable still in the 60s, the early 60s. So I'm just going to use this colour mainly close to the lashes. Um, it was sort of like a flash of blue. We didn't really register that she had any blue on until she closed her eyes or looked down. So there's only a couple of frames in the movie where you really see this sort of flash of 
blue behind the liner. The makeup in the film was done by a guy called Howard Schmidt, who is a really famous Hollywood makeup artist. He worked on The Wizard of Oz and he did lots of work around the birth of television. What he's most famous for actually is for having makeup artistry be recognised by the film industry because in the early days makeup artists weren't even credited. They had no union, no rights. Wow. Um, they, there wasn't a category at the Oscars for makeup artist. And he campaigned really tirelessly throughout his career first to have it recognised as a union and in the beginning they became part of the painters union because no one really knew where to put them mm. so they joined the scenic artists union mm -hmm. because they thought oh well they use brushes so put them in with the scenic artists and um, eventually he campaigned successfully to have a credit you know at the end of the movie because they never used to even credit the makeup artist so onto liner I'm going to use some gel L'Oreal liner and um, in certain parts of the film it looks a bit like liquid in other parts it looks like pencil but today we have wonderful things like gel liner, which is, makes it really easy to apply. And I'm sure Howard would have loved to have gel. So for the liner, it wasn't anything overly dramatic. It's going to work really close to the roots of the lashes. I'm going to smudge this as well. This is really just my base anyway, because I'm going to put some lashes on in a second. And it wasn't super winged out in a kind of 60s way or even in a 50s way, it was more subtle than that. So I'm just going all the way along, working it into the roots of the lashes. I'm gonna finish the liner off once the lashes are on. I'm just using a puff actually, just to hold the skin because I've gone for this very made up, sort of flawless look on the base and I don't want my hands to disrupt it. When I get to the outer corner, we're not gonna wing out, we're just gonna We've come to a natural end and as I say once we've got some lashes on there we can just do a little bit more smudging likewise the inner corner if you can just look that way for me Svetlana and look it up a little higher perfect just go right into the corner and then take a q-tip and just smudge so onto lashes just look down for me Svetlana it's gonna curl give them a really really good curl I'm going to start by doing the lower lashes, if you could just look up for me because her lashes, I don't think she wore fake eyelashes in the movie at all if you look really closely, um, I think she just naturally had very long eyelashes so now the top lashes, just look that way for me Svelana I'm going to apply some fake lashes which as I said I, I'm pretty sure Tibby Hedron did not wear in the movie but just for a little bit more drama because hers were naturally incredibly long but I'm going to take off maybe the th three at the end, the really long ones so I'm just going to drop the lashes at the outer two thirds and pull them into place and we'll patch up the liner once the glue is dry. Is it open for me? So we've just got a little bit more drama there. So as that glue is drying, I'm just going to go over it again with the gel liner. And then at the outer corner, I'm just going to very subtly thin things out. So it's not really a cat eye or winged or anything. It's just finished off. Just like that. I'm going to go back in with the mascara and take it right through those false lashes. You can see they're very individual looking, those lashes. So we're just going to get some more length a la tippy. Before I finish eye makeup, I'm going to just do brows. And I'm going to use this, which is the Brow Tech To Go pencil. And Tippy's brows were defined, but not, they're kind of well defined I'd say but without looking harsh in any way so I'm going to take lots of fine strokes of this and she had a good high arch but not a very angular one so we're going to bring up the height there it's definitely not an Elizabeth Taylor and work that through and I'm going to use lots of strokes with the um, brush as well just to soften that all before I take some powder through them and then lengthen here at the outer 
corner. I'm going to go through with a sort of slightly lighter browny shade. So that's a nice defined arched brow. And to finish eyes, I'm going to go back in with the light brown shade and just really smudge everything in because we all we want from the blue is a flash every now and again. Onto the lips and I'm going to go all over with a number seven pencil. So it's a really good orangey shade. In terms of the lip colour, throughout the, the movie The Bird, it starts off really peachy when she's in the shop. More of a 60s colour. And then when she goes to drop off the birds at his apartment, it gets very orangey and more coral. Likewise, when she goes to visit him, it's like she sort of gets more glammed up. Either that, or it was simply the Technicolor playing up. Because you never quite knew what you were going to get with the makeup. But because they did so many colour tests, I kind of think that he, he sort of planned it to be that way. And then by the end of the movie, when she's being pecked to death, it's a sort of beige lip, it's a very pale lip at the end. And then apply this by Terry Coral Lipstick on top. So this is more of a pinky, corally shade. Have you ever seen any of the um, Hitchcock movies, Petlana? No, I haven't actually, but I'm very intrigued now. If you watch The Birds, I mean, I've seen it so many times, mm. but there's a scene when um, she's sitting outside the school having a cigarette on a bench, and then you see one bird behind her, and then the next scene there's sort of ten birds, you know, they're building up. Mm. And um, every time I see the film, I just shudder. It, there's so much atmosphere and it's so tense. Although now that I know how badly he treated Tippy, it this sort of is, uh, makes me uh, see them in a whole different light, really. And to finish off, a touch of Mac Peach's blusher. Again, a really good 60s colour. And there wasn't ever very much blusher, but there was just a tiny bit around this area. And it wasn't a sculpty look or anything. It was very natural. Now we must talk about the nails because manicurist Shireen Gale has been here today and um, given you tips which are incredible because we couldn't have done a tippy look without giving you some amazing nails. You'll really notice them in the movie, the classic shape, the sort of pointy oval shape of the late 50s and early 60s which everyone used to mm. have. Um, if you watch Mad Men and things you see them and those great pinky corally nail polishes. So that's you all tippified. Thank you. You're welcome.